life just got a whole lot better for our crew. Watch as we take this typical five by eight cargo trailer and completely transform it into an off-grid freshwater and waste trailer. This side door opens to a cabinet that houses all of our necessary hookups. For starters, we've got a vent to vent our water tank, an overhead light, a switch here to turn on our water pump. This gauge tells us how much fresh water is in our tank. This hose is where we hook up to the city water to fill our fresh water tank. This is where we hook our hose to pull the water from the trailer into the fifth wheel. This gauge tells us how full the black tank is. And then this is where we pump the black water from the fifth wheel. For the past 10 weeks, we've been religiously filling these igloos every couple days, using them for drinking water, for brushing our teeth, washing utensils, washing our hands, and, and we learned how to stretch every precious drop. We're on an insanely tight budget, and we're both just bargain shoppers at heart. We scoured the internet and finally found two really promising trailers online. We set up an appointment and went and checked them out that day. We were able to get a small price cut by paying cash and close the deal. All right. Now that we've got a trailer, let's pimp it out. We're going to check out these old containers. We're going to use them for hauling our water and hauling our sewer. I think you're right. Those are about eight inches. Smells clean. We just have to get rid of some of this, mm -hmm. but I think we could get enough flat area to make it work. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't smell good? I can't breathe. Oh man, I went into that one all <laughs> four. Wish I had gotten it. So this will be our sewer tub. Not for fresh water. I don't know what that is exactly. Is that the fish oil? I think it is fish oil. And now the real fun begins. We wanted to be able to utilize this light and use it in a different location in the trailer. We had just started this project and we were already running into issues. We seriously spent more time than I care to admit wrestling with this light fixture. We pulled out all the bits. We were thinking that we had the wrong size. Maybe we could try a different style bit and it would catch the way we needed it to. Eventually we realized the screws were an eight point star that were designed specifically for trailers and RVs. We couldn't waste another two hours driving into town and back to get the bit that we needed, so Jeff decided to drill it out, which proved to be quite the feat. The screw is impenetrable. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> That did nothing to that. 
Well, it can only get easier from here on out, right? You know what? I just thought of a really good idea of what I could do with these screws. Do a little cabinet test fit. And now we're ready for installation.
took the rubber grommets and washers off of the bolts that came with this. I'll be using them with my rivets. Okay, so we got our water pump for our potable water. It needs 110 volts and we're gonna put it on a switch. So we run our power into the side. We've got these plugs that we're plugging our power into, but because we're putting on a switch, I'm gonna run that plug into here so that we can turn our pump on and bring water into our reservoir in our fifth wheel. But because it's going on a switch, I got to splice the switch in here, which I'll also splice the um, tank heater so that it's on this same plug. And then this plug will have the 12 volt uh, transformer on it for the 12 volt stuff that we're running. Our submersible pump that we're installing in our tank came with this larger thread, but also a fitting that changes it from that thread to a garden hose size thread but we need to change it from that thread to pipe thread. So I have this fitting that allows us to make that transition. We'll be installing that. And then I've got another fitting that changes it from pipe thread to allow PEX pipe to be attached to it so that we can connect to our other fitting on the top of the tank. will be on our console inside of our cabinet through the side door. It'll be connected to this. So. Okay, so I got these, and they're going to hold this to the floor. You're not gonna be able to see me get this one up in the front because it's too tight, but I'll try and get a good shot of the ones in the back. <coughs>
we've got a switch here so that we could provide power to our pump whenever we want. But I've also got the tank heater wired directly to the power supply. So right here on this pole, we've got the power coming in from our plug that is on the outside of the trailer. And it is connected to the tank heater. On this side, I just have the pump so that I can turn it on with the switch at any time I want. We've got our grounds all wired in and then our commons wired together. And that's how that works. This black wire from the gauge connects to the black wire from the sensor. the light and then running the power from the light to these other plugs that are going to be running off of auxiliary power. So here is the light connected to the auxiliary power. I was able to recycle this splicer from how the light was hooked up before. This is where the light was originally connected. It came down and connected through that hole. Now this wire is already grounded somewhere, and so I'm going to just be grounding all of my ground wires to this. So I've extended my wire from my light, and now I can tie all my ground into this wire.
install it right inside of here. And just connect it to these lines for these lights. Because these two come over and connect to this light. So it's on 12 volt power. Yeah. And that's all that needs. And that's all it needs. We have holes. Okay, so this is how you empty the tank. So you pull these and it opens the valve. And then right there is where you actually connect the black water. Works like, like a baby? baby. Yeah. Yeah, works like a baby. Yeah, works like this macerator pump that we bought to get the black water out of our RV and into our tank came with this short little cord that connects to this cord that has a switch on it, but it plugs into a 12 volt socket for a car. Um, but we're doing something different. We actually just installed this plug over here that's going to allow us to plug it directly into the RV instead of having to worry about having a cigarette lighter to plug into. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to splice the end of this with another cord that I bought that has this plug so that we have the ability to plug this extension cord into this and then that into that and then have the link that we need to reach over to our black water. this knot on there and then I've got to glue some pipes to it and get it run over here
I'll see your fingers. You know why it's teal? Because of the type of pipe it's supposed to be used for. What kind of pipe is that? ABS or something? I don't know. Is that right? Is that what that black stuff is called? The black pipe. Isn't it called ABS or is that the gray? No, the black is ABS. Was I right? Yeah, but you were only half right. Is it just when you're connecting ABS to other types of pipe? Yeah. I'm brilliant! What other kind of pipe? Well, looks like PVC. Yep. You're a genius, Amy. That's why you married me. So this is our RV connection. This is what your typical connection is for um, some kind of RV blackwater black water dump. And we need to attach this to our setup. So what I've got to do is connect it to a three inch pipe. And so I'm going to make a piece that will go between this and our reducer so that we can get to our two inch outlet that we've got going on on this. And then I'll have my valve connected to that so that we can turn it off and on. to add the auxiliary to our plug so we got a seven pin plug that allows us to put an auxiliary on there uh, you have to go to seven uh, a seven way plug to get the auxiliary option uh, when we bought the trailer the light that was in there was hooked to all of the marker lights. So it would only have power if the lights were on on the van. Um, so this will allow it to have power just being hooked up without it, um, without it uh, needing to have the lights on, which will make it so that when we have it plugged into our outlet, when it's hooked up to 110, it can bypass the trailer lights and just have power to the interior light and the gauges and other stuff that we have hooked to it. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm gonna get rid of this crappy corrugated protective shield that came with the trailer and I'm gonna be replacing it with um, a much better braided sleeve and add it into, add this red one into our cluster. So the ground is one of those really crappy eight point star bit screws up here.
that. Both of them. Okay. Right yep. Oh yeah, that's on it. But uh, we got gauges are working. Okay. And light. Perfect. Okay, so I hope we're doing this right. I've never emptied the RV before. This video to bring you a special family moment. So we were driving up the mesa. Jeff spotted a caterpillar, so now he's out there with well, it's not a all caterpillar. the kids looking at it. It's not a caterpillar. Yeah. That's what it looks like. Are you sure that's not a centipede? Definitely positive. It's. We a now return you to your regularly scheduled video. talking to the people that were here before us okay and they said that this is the emergency shut off but you can't get your quarters back if you push that uh, so they just recommend putting in one quarter at a time until we know how many it takes to fill it up and then yeah. next time we know to just put in that many quarters okay
no. Oh no. <laughs> Well, we've got water, so that wraps up this project. If you guys like what we're doing and you want to see more, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share our videos so that we can continue to bring you content. We're going to run out of money eventually, so we're kind of dependent on you guys to help us out. Please.